Welcome again to the 2019 Hamilton City School District Athletic Hall of Fame induction ceremony. This is the 23rd year for this dinner, and we are so excited to induct 10 new members into this year's class. Uh, before we get started, I know they're still working hard to get plates out of the way and everything like that. How about a big round of applause for our caterers for tonight's event, Two Women in a Kitchen. They always do such an excellent job with this event, and we are so thankful. One of the best caterers in this area, so make sure that you uh, please get in contact with them should you have an event that needs to be catered. The food here tonight was spectacular. All right, to get us started, uh, I want to invite the athletic director for Hamilton High School, Mr. Todd Grimm, up to the stage to present the Coach Bill Sharp Scholarship. Todd, come on up. Good evening, everyone. Uh, first of all, I'd like to say congratulations to our 10 inductees. Uh, it's a great honor uh, to be in front of you as the athletic director of this great uh, Hamilton City School District. Um, just a lot of great history and tradition here and, and just very proud to be the representative that uh, gets to stand in front of you and present this scholarship on behalf of the Sharp family. Uh, I'm going to read a little bit to you. Um, unfortunately, I didn't have the honor to know Coach Bill Sharp uh, personally, but I've heard a lot of great stories in my six years as athletic director and, and having the great fortune to sit with his children at the dinner table and, and hear some uh, share their stories with me. So I'm going to re uh, read a little bit to you, and, and then I've got a great announcement with that. <clears throat> Coach Bill Sharp was a teacher and coach in Hamilton for 45 years. He was also active in the Hamilton Parks and Recreation Department during that time, as well as a fitness instructor at the Hamilton Central YMCA for 20 years. As a high school and college student, as he was known, Coach participated in a variety of sports. He was a member of the state championship basketball team in high school and also excelled as a member of the track and baseball teams. He attended the Ohio State University where he was a member of the track and wrestling teams. Coach Sharp graduated from the Ohio State University in 1928 and moved to Hamilton in 1930 and he spent over 60 years impacting the lives of thousands of students and athletes in Hamilton. He was known to everyone as coach, and his devotion to sports and fitness was overshadowed only by his desire to help people. Coach Sharp strongly emphasized a commitment to academic excellence, competing with honor, and displaying good sportsmanship at all times. Although small in stature, his actions and positive attitude cast a huge shadow as a role model for generations of Hamilton youth. The gymnasium at Garfield Middle School is named in his honor, and he was inducted into this Hall of Fame in 1999. As I said, I get the opportunity to stand in front of you and award two of our former student athletes with a, a great scholarship. Just want to talk to you about the criteria real quick, and then I'm going to ask uh, our two former students to join me up here and present them with their scholarship. The Coach Sharp Scholarship Award shall be awarded each year to one male, former senior athlete, student athlete, and one female. The recipient shall be chosen based on the following criteria. The student must have earned at least two varsity letters during their four years at Hamilton High, Student must have maintained a minimum grade point average of a 3.0. Student must have displayed outstanding sportsmanship during athletic competition. And student must have displayed outstanding citizenship. And I attest that these two individuals that I'm going to bring up here in just a minute uh, are exactly what this scholarship is about. Um, I will say that these are two of my more favorite kids that I've had in six years at Hamilton. Um, like I said, they, they, they epitomize 
what the Coach, Scholar, uh, Coach Sharp Scholarship is all about. So at this time, I would like to bring up our two recipients. The first one is Jade Wells. In her four years at Hamilton High, Jade participated in girls basketball and girls soccer. She was a three-year varsity letter winner in soccer and a four-year varsity letter winner in basketball. Currently, Jade is attending Eastern Kentucky University and she is majoring in physical therapy. And she is just a, a beautiful young lady with just an infectious smile. I mean, she's, like I said, one of my favorite all time. Jay, congratulations. The male recipient of the award is Caleb Hunley. <laughs> Caleb's one of the toughest kids I know, uh, and, and I'll tell you here in a minute. Uh, Caleb was a three-year varsity letter winner in football where he played four years. He's a member, he was a member of the Hamilton High School National Honor Society and he is currently attending Miami University of Ohio majoring in mechanical engineering. Uh, just a quick story about Caleb, his senior year um, he, he suffered a, uh, <clears throat> a shoulder injury. I mean his shoulder was messed up pretty bad. Um, knocked out of place early in the season and I'm telling you what, the kid battled through and made it through 10 weeks of football. And just very, very proud. This, this young man, like I said, he's one of the toughest young men I know. Um, talking to our, our former head coach, um, Caleb attended every workout and was at every practice, never missed anything. He, he was exactly what Big Blue football was all about. So. Uh, just very proud to uh, recognize Caleb Hunley. Thank you very much. Let's have another round of applause for Jade and Caleb. Excellent, and best of luck to both of you as you continue your academic, athletic careers. That smile and persevering spirit will serve you well, so job well done. And I have to remind myself not to touch this microphone because I have no idea what Todd Grimm did to it, but it sounded like he got jolted a little bit. So, uh, so I'm going to stay off of that. Um, as we get started, there are a number of you here this evening who are past inductees into the Hall of Fame. We have a great legacy, 23 years, as we mentioned. So if you are a past inductee into the Hamilton City School District Athletic Hall of Fame, we ask that you stand at this time and please let us recognize you. Great to see all of you back here, and um, on this year particularly, our, our hearts are a little bit heavier when we speak about past inductees. Um, as many of you know, on Monday, January 14th, the Hamilton City School District lost a very special member of its family. Longtime educator and coach Tim Reed passed away suddenly. Uh, Coach Reed retired as a physical education teacher from Garfield Middle School where he coached many sports for the Griffins as well as for the Big Blue. Most notably, his time served as an assistant baseball and basketball coach. Tim was a graduate of Taft High School and attended Belmont College on a baseball scholarship. He was inducted into the Hamilton City School District Athletic Hall of Fame in 2016. Uh, today, as I was preparing my notes, I couldn't help but pull up Tim's acceptance speech and Tim is one of the few individuals that when his name was called I've been doing this dinner for many years uh, he got a standing ovation and I think the most interesting thing about that speech that he gave and I watched his entire speech this morning and uh, Tim Tim just always treated me like gold and, and was a very special guy um, 
but the, the first thing out of his mouth and every word that came out of his mouth during that entire speech, not one time did he say the word I. It was constantly you and pointing out people who had made his life so special. And I know that Tim's spirit is here with us tonight. Um, we also had another loss, Gary Musselman, who was inducted last year, passed away as well. And our, our hearts are just very saddened uh, by those two losses. But especially tonight, as we think about Tim Reed, I would like everybody, as we begin, to please take a moment of silence to remember Coach Reed as we keep his wife, Diane, and his children, Allison, Shannon, and Jimmy Joe, in our thoughts. Thank you. The Hamilton City School District Athletic Hall of Fame would not be possible without several volunteers, school employees, and committee members. And at this time, we want to thank those individuals for their efforts and all the work they put in to make this such a great night. The three folks with the athletic department that are here, I want them to stand and be recognized. Todd Grimm, Tyler Ballou, and Linda Lehman. Please stand and let us give you a round of applause. And Tyler, if you didn't know, I have to point this out, became a father just three weeks ago, and he's not passed out yet. So let's give him another round of applause. So happy for you and Brittany. Congratulations again. Uh, a few other folks that we need to thank, Jeff Tanner and Jostens for their donations of the Hall of Fame gifts. We'll talk about those in just a little bit. The Sharp family for the generous scholarship that was presented just a few moments ago. Also want to make sure we give a special shout out to Steve Caldwell and TV Hamilton, hometown television with a personal touch. Let's give them a round of applause for the cameras. We are actually streaming right now on Facebook Live, so if you have people back at home that didn't come and you want to rub this in your face, tonight's your opportunity, so just tell them to log on to Facebook and look for TV Hamilton. Uh, this event is also, it'll be posted on TV Hamilton's YouTube page, uh, so you can also access it there after tonight's event. So Steve, thank you for setting up and for spending your evening here with us. Let's have a round of applause for the folks at the Fitton Center for the Creative Arts. We, uh, we shifted this dinner to the Fitness Center, I believe, about three years ago, and they have just done a tremendous job. We're so thankful to be here with them. And then again, uh, special thanks to our caterers for tonight's event, Two Women in a Kitchen, uh, another great dinner. We have a Hall of Fame committee made up of a number of members who put in all the work around the year to select our inductees and to really keep this event going. So I'm going to read through all of their names. As I read your name, if you don't mind just standing, and then at the end we'll give you all one big round of applause for your participation. Those uh, Hall of Fame committee members, Mel Moody Baker, Todd Grimm, Linda Milholland, Larry Wood, Tyler Ballou, George Johnson, John Ross, Jack Young, Wayne Bowling, Jerry Lauer, and John Wilhelm. Let's give all of our committee members a round of applause. Thank you for your service. Now there is one special recognition that goes into tonight's event. At this time, we want to recognize a member of the Hamilton City School District Athletic Hall of Fame Committee. Since the induction of the first class of the Hamilton City School District Athletic Hall of Fame that occurred in 1997, Melvin Moody Baker has been a committee member. Uh, Moody is a lifelong Hamiltonian where he and his wife Jan raised their son and daughter. A 1951 graduate of Hamilton, he was a standout athlete participating in both football and basketball. Moody then continued his athletic career for the Miami University Redskins, where he helped the football team win conference championships in 1953 and 1954. He was inducted into the Butler County Sports Hall of Fame in 95 and the Hamilton City School District Athletic Hall of Fame in 1999. Moody's also an engaged community member, having served on numerous advisory boards. Uh, he participated in various associations and also received recognitions such as the Small Businessman of the Year. Uh, Moody has been, has been given much of his personal and professional time to others, but this year 
he will be stepping down from the Hall of Fame committee after the conclusion of this banquet. And at this time, we want to take a moment to recognize Mr. Melvin Moody Baker with a special gift for his countless hours of dedication to this committee. So, Melvin Moody Baker, come on up. Thank you, Moody, for all your hard work. You are a legend. We are going to proceed with the induction of our 2019 class. And ladies and gentlemen, here's how this will go down. Uh, I'm going to announce each member's name. And when I announce your name, if you don't mind just coming up here to the front of the stage, you can stand right here as I read through your bio to all the people who have assembled here tonight. Uh, then after that, you've got a few moments to say thank you. I want to make sure that you stand right here behind this podium for a variety of reasons. First and foremost, we want to make sure that we get your lovely smile and your acceptance speech uh, here on TV Hamilton and that it's streaming live. The other reason I need you to stand right behind this podium, if you talk too long, there is a tank full of flesh-eating piranhas underneath this stage. We got a button at this table, and if you talk too long, bam, down you go. Just like that game on Ellen, okay? Everybody goes down. So keep that in mind. We got this place rented till like 10 p.m. tonight, not 10 p.m. on Wednesday. Everybody good? Feel good about that? I think we can do it. I'm confident we can do this all together. Uh, but please make sure you come up, and then after you uh, conclude, if you just step right down here to the side, Tyler Blue will be there to present you with your award and your gift that was donated by Justin. So all those items are there. Our first inductee from the class of 1959 is Morris Mo Flagg. Moe's a 1959 graduate of Hamilton Catholic, where he played basketball for Hall of Fame coach Terry Malone. After graduating from the University of Dayton, Moe began his teaching career in the Hamilton City School District. This led to a long and successful coaching career, including boys basketball, girls basketball, and tennis. While serving as the freshman coach at Wilson Junior High School, Coach Flagg's teams accumulated a career record of 71 wins and only 13 losses. How about that? Earning six league championships and four city championships. Coach Flagg also coached at Big Blue under Hall of Fame coach Marv McCollum for six seasons and spent one season as the varsity head coach. In addition to coaching basketball, Coach Flagg also loved to coach tennis, where he led the boys' tennis team for 16 seasons and the girls' tennis team for 13. During the 1980 season, the girls team went 13-2 and two and tied for first place in the GMC. Coach Flagg also had the privilege of coaching three-time state qualifier and Hall of Fame member Tracy Collette. In 1985, Coach Flagg was named the GMC Coach of the Year when the boys team clinched the GMC championship. In 2004, Mo was awarded the Leeds Bronson Award for his community contribution to the game of tennis. Mo lives in Hamilton with his wife, Karen, and they have three children, Jody Flagg Boyle, Jason Flagg, and Mike Elliott. Ladies and gentlemen, our first inductee from the class of 1959, Morris Mo Flagg. I'm going to try to get out my cheat sheet here, okay? Well, the first thing I want to say is I was going to go 20 minutes, but no, I'm not. <laughs> so, uh, but uh, first thing I'd like to do is congratulate the uh, inductees for tonight. Well deserved. And secondly, uh, the committee for selecting me. Uh, I got the letter through the mail and I looked at it. Uh, I was in Florida at the time, so I called my friend Larry Wood. And of course, he says, get your butt on the plane and get up here. So I'm here, heading back to Florida on Monday. But I, I wouldn't miss this. And I think kind of the title of this tonight, it's Family 
and friends. Uh, hope I don't get emotional. I don't think people realize when you work in a system 37 years and the people you meet, what that does for you. And this is a super honor for me. It really is. Family. Karen? Stand up. <laughs> she, uh, the lady, is, she, she, she makes the family go. The up and downs, the good times, the bad times, but she's there for me and I appreciate it. My son Jason lives in Palm Beach, not Palm Beach. Atlanta, Georgia, okay. Okay, he couldn't be here, but Atlanta, Georgia. I was gonna, I was gonna say Peachtree City, Georgia, where he is. Stepson, Mike Ellett, lives in Denver. Uh, my son-in-law, son Jeff Boyle, great father, great real estate man. So that's, that's a plug, okay? And my daughter, Jody Boyle, please stand up. Jody. I had the privilege of co coaching Jody in tennis. She's very active in the Y, and she's a great mother with the two kids here. So now, Connor, Caroline, stand up. <laughs> Can you see him okay? Okay. Connor, get up here a little bit. Move up a little bit. Caroline? Yeah, come on, buddy. Come on, Caroline. Get over that one a little bit. Uh, one thing they are, Besides athletes, their students um, do very well in school. Connor participates in basketball, soccer, swimming, and baseball. Does it all. Trying to be a point guard, and guess what he's trying to do now? Dribble with his left hand. So we're working on that. Caroline is a swimmer, basketball player. What else? Soccer, and she doubles up and plays tennis year-round. Uh, and I've got good news for her and bad news for her. The good news is we will not play any more sets in tennis. You're better than me now, <laughs> but, but you're still going to drill and hit that top spin lob, right? Okay, you may go back. <laughs> Great kids. I guess in the 37 years I uh, was in the system from elementary school to junior high to high school. Uh, some of the great times I wanted just well in the past was at Wilson Junior High School for seven years. And back in those days for the youngsters, the old, old people would know this, uh, we used to have night games at Wilson Junior High School. Filled the place. I mean filled the place. And then we used to have a tournament at the end of the year. Uh, it varied between Garfield and Taft, and again, those were sellouts. And I think back in those days, it surely vibrated the city, the basketball program for Taft, which was very good teams, and also for Garfield, very good teams. So that was a big part of my life then until I moved to the high school. And there I ran into a guy named Marvin McCollum, who uh, took me under his wing and showed me how to coach basketball. And I'll get back to him in a minute, but one of the, two, two of the other assistants there were Mike Destola and Joe Urso. And Coach McCollum, I think, you know, had a lot of quotes, but if you ever went to his practice and watched him at practice, you had to learn because you just did it over and over again. You know, I'd look at the clock and I'd say, hey, we're gonna be out here by five o'clock. No, no, we're there at 6.30, still working on the same thing. But what happened in the end? success. So I want to thank him, who's now deceased, but a big part of what I learned about basketball from him. And then I had the privilege of coaching at Hamilton High and the head coach and some of the person, the staff that I worked under at that particular time were Buddy McCollum, Ray Mills, Ron Spurlock, and Larry Wood. And those people, I'll say one thing from all, great coaches and a bottom line, great people. And I think that's what you're going to find about these people that are going to be inducted tonight. They're great people. And I hope 
they're part of the family I'm talking about and friends. Some of the players I was blessed to coach through the years, Kevin Grevy, Jerry Matthews, Ron Spurlock, Brian Grevy, Andy Kolsar, Phil Griesinger, Norm Grevy, and Joe Ballou. The only Grevy boy I did not coach was Scott, but my wife sees, sees him enough, and we're, we're giving him big time money, so <laughs> enough said on that, okay? All right, big time money. And also, I would like to say about uh, those people, they didn't need me, I needed them. I, I mean, those guys were great basketball players, but you see them today, they're still the most friendliest guys in the world, and they know you and they respect you. The other thing I picked up tonight, Andy Colsar's here. Well, he tells me he plays tennis now. So guess what happens? He and I are gonna to get together and play. It won't be singles, but it's gonna be doubles. So Andy, I got your business card and you're gonna get a phone call. After I got out of basketball and with basketball, I got into the sport that I think is ready for life, tennis. And I play quite a bit played this morning with the older guys, or I'm sorry, the younger guys. I go back to Florida, I people, play with people my age. But I think you can do that a lot of years, whatever sport that is. And they call it the sport of life, and I think it really is. And the tennis part of it is, you know, uh, the gentleman that, I uh, forget his name, that, the introduction man. <laughs> I'm sorry, I, I'm not good on names, but he is very good. He's very good, very good. He mentioned Tracy Collette, and she would have been a four-time qualifier for the state, but the one year she could not go, she was ill and could not play that year. And another person, one of my former players is here tonight, uh, she's married now, uh, I'll, go, I'll go with her maiden name, Lauren Anderson. Okay, why don't you just stand up and see how, how our tennis players were, okay? All right, that's Lauren. And, and, I, and I guess, I guess uh, the thing is about those type of sports is, uh, you know, you see the people and uh, that's what makes it. And like I said, it's family and it's friends. And I'm gonna leave you with this thought, okay? In conclusion, live for today. You cannot change yesterday and tomorrow is not guaranteed. Life is about family and friends, thank you. Sorry, I you're, forgot your name. You're <laughs> <laughs> Most people do. It's all right. I'm telling you right now, folks, I'm leaving this place and getting business cards that say, Tyler Bradshaw, introduction man. <laughs> you're welcome. <laughs> yeah. Mo, I have been called a lot worse, I can tell you that, mostly by people in this room, I think. So, uh, no, thank you. We, we really appreciate you being here with us tonight. Our next inductee from the class of 1948 is Nancy Fry Sturgeon. <laughs> Nancy is a 1948 graduate of Hamilton High School where she participated in tumbling and tennis teams. She also attended Miami University. Folks, if you're not picking up on something tonight, Miami University leads to instant success and Hall of Fames, okay? <laughs> Two in a row and me, the introduction man. So keep that in mind, all right? She attended Miami University where she played four years of field hockey, basketball, and tennis while also participating in dance theater. In 1952, Nancy won the state doubles tennis championship with her partner, Jill Pop. While at Miami, she also served as a Women's Athletic Association officer. She went on to work at Miami University for 47 years. Give her a round of applause for that. I've been working there for nine and it feels like 47, so 
Pray for me. Um, she went on to work at Miami for 47 years where she coached tennis, advised the fencing club, and operated the Women's Recreation Association. In 1999, she was honored as a Miami Parent of the Year, and in 1996, she received recognition as an outstanding physical education graduate. In 2009, Nancy and other former Miami University athletes were recognized for their accomplishments and were given their varsity letters. Nancy resides in Oxford with her husband, James, and they have three children, James Sturgeon III, Jean Sturgeon, and Janet Sturgeon Holmes. Ladies and gentlemen, from the class of 1948, Nancy Fry Sturgeon. Nancy, congratulations. And I'll move that mic. My family said, please do not introduce us. <laughs> <laughs> so family members, wave your hand and then to know that we do have family members. <laughs> I want to thank Jack Young for nominating me and for Dick Nelson for his help. And it's also an honor to follow my classmates from 1948 that are in this hall. Harry Bradbury, Cash Powell, Dennis Jones, Demas Jones, and Jack Young. It's also totally awesome to follow my brother Jay. Jay has been inducted six times in a Hall of Fame. And he's still at age of almost 90, coaches the Miami Club football team. There were some times that I probably should not have followed Jay. <laughs> For instance, Jay thought it was fun to play on the roof in Hamilton. So we went out of our second story window and played on the roof. And I remember hiding behind the chimney and Jay remembers trying to see where the courthouse was downtown. So I say that the guardian angels had to work overtime at 911 Clinton Avenue. I would like to fo thank the following people who have touched my life in some way. Ruth Lemons was our Roosevelt Junior High School gym class teacher and gym class was always my favorite class even though as swinging on the ropes to my teacher's chagrin i dropped the <laughs> fell from the rope and banged my head on the floor but i did get up so <laughs> vera zippel at hampton high school who i idolized and was my teacher and tumbling coach and Jean Garrett Baker was a friend and buddy on the tumbling team. Jean, would you wave your hand? Yes. Uh, Jim Grimm was known for his famous tumblers, which were really great. And he also taught a recreation class and taught me the waltz. We did this little heel toe thing, and then it changed to a waltz. And that remains my favorite dance until this day. At Miami, we had six women who taught physical education, and we had 16 different activity classes. From archery to tennis, we had lots of fun, so life was good, and we especially enjoyed doing dance and sports. Regarding my, part my part participation in teams, field hockey, basketball, on tennis, my friend Austin Gleason kidded me and said, Nancy, how can you play basketball four years at Miami and never make a basket? <laughs> and I said, well, I was a guard. We played half court basketball and the guards did not shoot. The guards job was to get the ball across the line to the forwards. We were allowed one bounce to do this. I would also like to thank my tennis partner, Joe Pop was mentioned at Miami, Ann Bever in Oxford, and that fierce competitor was a coach and a player, Carol Hartman.
And I also would like to thank my, you're all so quiet out there. <laughs> my, my friends and office mates, Joyce Trump and Pat Griesinger. In closing, I lived through lots of things and I realized I liked so many things, but I remember we did the, what's this? wave and then it's a hand handshake but then all of a sudden we get into high five one high five two knuckles <laughs> and I have not gotten the hang of the chest bumps <laughs> so. I do want to thank my family for their love and support through the years. Thank you. Took everything I had not to chest bump right there, folks. I'm telling you. I'm telling you. Never wanted to run up to somebody so we just, ah, oh, all right. <laughs> Thank you, Nancy. That was wonderful. Really enjoyed it. Our next inductee from the class of 1927, Clyde Gilbert. And I want to invite Clyde's granddaughter, Pamela, up here onto the stage. She's going to be honoring him tonight. Let me tell you a little bit about Clyde. And what is it about, like, people who had their picture taken in the 1920s just automatically look better than everybody else. Have you noticed that? Like, I, I wonder someday they're going to find, like, that weird Instagram photo of all of us to put on things like this. It's never going to look as good as that. Clyde is a 1927 graduate of Hamilton High School where he lettered in four sports, football, basketball, baseball, and track. He was named the captain of the basketball team his junior year and senior seasons and helped lead the team to an undefeated season his senior year before eventually losing in the state finals. He was also named the captain of the baseball team during his junior year. Clyde shined on the track as well, recording a 10.2 second time for the 100-yard dash on a cinder track. Clyde's athletic abilities earned him an athletic scholarship to Ohio University, However, he suffered a career-ending knee injury and returned to Hamilton where he married his wife, Geraldine. Clyde remained active in sports coaching in the Front Street Presbyterian Church athletic program for many years. Clyde also saw success as a businessman, founding the Gilbert Insurance Agency, which has been passed on to his son, Richard A. Gilbert, and now his granddaughter, Pamela Gilbert Anderson. Clyde passed away in October of 2001, and here to honor him tonight, his granddaughter, Pamela Gilbert Anderson. Congratulations. Well, hopefully you can hear me. Um, I want to thank you on behalf of my grandfather, Clyde Gilbert. I knew, I know he would be honored and thrilled to be inducted into the Hamilton City Schools Athletic Hall of Fame. I'd like to thank Jack Young and the other committee members for his nomination and induction. I must admit that I was not aware of Grandpa's athletic accomplishments until this nomination. The athletic genes did not come my way. <laughs> I do know that lettering in four different sports today is rare, as is running the 100-yard dash in 10.2 seconds on a cinder track. Being offered a four-year athletic scholarship to Ohio University was a wonderful opportunity. He suffered the career-ending injury while at OU, which caused him to lose the scholarship in those days and return to Hamilton. He continued his love of sports, though, coaching and playing for semi-pro Armco basketball and baseball teams and coaching sports teams at the Presbyterian Church here in Hamilton. Some of you may remember the dedication of the Virgil Swarm Stadium at Hamilton High School and the 100-year anniversary of the football program when Grandpa was presented the game ball by TV sports reporter Denny Jansen who came down from a helicopter over the stadium. That was probably one of the highlights of our family's career. As we all know, there is no I in team, 
and I'm sure he would want to thank all of his teammates for their help in his success. Again, I want to thank the committee for such a lovely, well-organized event and for this honor into the Athletic Hall of Fame. Thank you so much, Pamela. We appreciate you sharing that story with us. Our next inductee from the class of 1975 is Brian Grevy. <laughs> Brian was a standout basketball player for the Taft Tigers, where he played for fellow Hall of Fame member Coach Marv McCollum. Brian earned recognition as a member of the Greater Miami Conference First Team, the All-District First Team, and the All-State Team in 1974. The 1975 season saw Grevy being recognized as a Parade Magazine All-American and a participant in the Coochers All-American game in New York. Brian ranks 23rd in career scoring for Taft High School. He earned a scholarship to the University of South Carolina where he played basketball for Gamecock Hall of Famer Coach Frank McGuire. He earned his undergraduate degree as well as a Juris Doctorate from South Carolina and practiced law both in Ohio and South Carolina until 2015. He is currently the head basketball coach at Bishop England High School where he has accrued the third winningest record in their school history. He has helped place 11 different players into the college ranks, has taken two teams to the State Elite Eight, and was named the South Carolina Region Coach of the Year twice. Brian and his wife Aline have three children, Aaron Grevy, Kara Kennedy, and BJ Grevy, and reside in Mount Pleasant, South Carolina. You're coming up to speak for Brian. Come on up. They didn't tell me this ahead of time, and I apologize. <laughs> Sorry about that. They didn't give me the info. Uh, my name's Norm Gravy. I'm Brian's uh, younger brother, the better younger brother. Um, he's sorry, very sorry he can't be here to this special night. Hamilton is a great city, and it's been awful good to our family. Um, even from my dad, um, even though he wasn't in the public schools, you know, he played in the state 48 state final for Hamilton Catholic, and then Kevin and Brian and Scott and myself. We're very grateful for the coaches we've had in Hamilton. Uh, we're very grateful for the, the the boosters that we've that we've experienced over our years, and the teachers to make us successful people after college. Uh, Brian is very disappointed he couldn't come. He's coaching Bishop England, and he's doing a fantastic job down there. He's one of the heads of the state uh, coaches association, so he couldn't make it up. They have their pairings tomorrow, and. Good luck to Coach Higgins. I've gone against him as a uh, coach at Middletown. Boo. Uh, <laughs> but um, he's a great coach, and he's going to do great things here. And uh, speaking of coaches, I wanted to just mention Coach Smith, who is instrumental in my basketball career. Um, Marv McCollum, who was instrumental in our whole family's career, uh, really made Kevin a great player. and made Brian a great player, but Brian really specifically wanted to mention Mo. Where is Mo? Oh, there's, there you are. Um, he said you were the first organized basketball coach he ever had, um, I think in the seventh and eighth grade. And you taught him the fundamentals. You taught him, tried to teach him to play defense. <laughs> but uh, coach tried that too, Coach Smith, but he was unsuccessful at that with me as well. Um, and and we, we really are grateful for your efforts, um, Mo, and, uh, you know, Brian has turned out to be a very good basketball coach. So, you know, you have a, uh, you know, the bloodline that's carried on. I also want to thank you. It was unfortunate we only played one year together. Coach was my first year coach at Hamilton High in 84. And uh, I remember a, a game. Uh, against Middletown and a guy named Chris Carter and uh, 
Coach is like, Norm, are you going to play any defense? I'm like, Coach, I got 27. He's got 26. We're up by one. <laughs> what the heck are you talking about? <laughs> but uh, we unfortunately lost that game. And um, he set up a great play. And uh, Bobby Blaylock had me open for a split second and took the shot and missed, and we lost. So there you go, Bobby. <laughs> Shout out to you. Um, and it haunts me to this day. Uh, you probably could still be coaching today if we had won that Middletown game. Um, and I have to get, you know, and I also uh, played tennis for fun, and we'll get to my mom, and she got us boys into tennis, and I did it for fun. But, Mo, you were a great coach, and uh, we won the 85 GMC championship. I think we won undefeated. Uh, Brett Parrish, great tennis player, Scott Hartford, Mitch Goodman, myself, and Marty Rice wasn't even on the team. <laughs> that was special. Um, I want to, Brian also wanted to thank you, Mom. Uh, we got every bit of our basketball abilities, according to Mom, from her. Um, she says, your father tried to teach her to play defense, but he said that's for the Army, Navy, Air Force, and Marines. <laughs> um, but, Mom, you were great for Brian. You know, I remember driving into South Carolina games. Uh, you know, you were so supportive of him. Brian had a, <clears throat> a great high school career going on and, and finished up with his junior year. And unfortunately, he had a horrible knee injury in an exhibition game his senior year. Uh, he played a great summer, and back in those days, there was no videotape, there was no internet. You had to go play for five days in front of college coaches, and it was, it was do or die for you, because they didn't travel to see you just to see who this guy was. They wanted to see you. It was a place. It was, it was the place, and Brian had an unbelievable summer, and he was um, an, a fabulous jump shooter. Um, he had the best shooting touch, really, the, the form uh, was was perfect, picture perfect. I, I learned so much about basketball from Brian and all my brothers, but Brian was a, you know, he was a coach. You know, he, he couldn't play his senior year, and he had great teammates, and he wanted to thank his teammates. Uh, and, of course, Marv McCollum, and it, it, it still hurts him today because they were a preseason number one team in the state with Phil Griesinger, who went on to Miami, Ed Kennedy, Brian, um, Andy Colsar was a sophomore who I think is one of the more underrated players to play at Taft. Uh, there was uh, Burtis, and they, they and as sophomores, Brian and Phil, with uh, Ron Spurlock and Coach Spurlock, uh, Jerry Matthews lost to Elder in the regional finals. Kevin lost to El uh, Dunbar in the regional finals. Uh, my dad lost in the state finals in 1948. Uh, and, and, and I had some pain and injured my knee as well. So we had some f unfortunate incidents to, to derail our careers. But Brian was fortunate enough. <clears throat> I, I, you know, it's, it's, seeing Brian go through that knee injury was really, really hard. Uh, he had a, a future that was special. Uh, you know, seeing Kevin be an All-American and go in the NBA, Brian had pressure and it hurt him to that he got hurt. And he always looks back as, as uh, uh, that he couldn't play his senior year. And uh, he went on to South Carolina and, and never really was able to uh, recover from that knee injury. He, he was never the same. And unfortunately, um, you know, he had to call it quits. But South Carolina and, and Frank McGuire, to, who coached Will, uh, Will Chamberlain in the NBA for 100 points, uh, he coached North Carolina to an NCAA title over Kansas. He had the New York connection to South Carolina. They had uh, Alex English and, and Mike Dunleavy and just some great players down there. And unfortunately, he wasn't able to continue to play. But South Carolina supported him and, and paid for the rest of his college uh, education. Brian was very smart. He was extremely smart and passed the bar down there, came into Hamilton and practiced uh, for many years here in Hamilton and then moved as his wife took a job at a later, later in his career. Um, Brian is very thankful uh, to be inducted. He wanted to congratulate the, uh, the inductees. 
Uh, and the names here in Hamilton are unbelievable. And there's just great tradition, and I really hope that Hamilton Big Blue can continue this success that we got to experience. And we were so fortunate to have Mo and Marv and, and, and John Smith and be along, play with great players like Larry Allen and Layman Dick. I mean, it just goes on and on. And uh, Brian's so thankful, and he really wished he could have been here. And he also special to mom uh, for you know, just being so supportive for you, for us, you know, to have four boys play Division One basketball and really be instrumental, uh, successful players. You know, it goes a long way to you. She instilled the confidence and the competitive drive that made us tough. And, and, and I always remember, she goes, Norm, the only time you pass is in the game of pitch. <laughs> you know, you know. You know, she was right about that. <laughs> you know, she was right about that. So congratulations to everybody. Mo, thank you for everything. Uh, Hamilton, you're great. And uh, good luck to Big Blue as they compete for, uh, you know, a deep run in the state tournament. You're in good hands. Um, thank you for everything. Thank you, Norm. Really appreciate you sharing that. My apologies again. So I did not have in my notes. So just so folks know why I had that look of panic on my face. One of my one of my biggest fears when I do these events more than well more than being electrocuted by a microphone is um, I'm always afraid I'm going to announce somebody to come up onto the stage and they're going to be in the bathroom, and we're all just going to be standing around like waiting. And there's you know somebody go like that. So I thought for a second my my worst fear was coming true. Thought, man, Brian's somewhere in the bathroom. Somebody needs to run in there and check on him. Like, but he's not here. So now it all makes sense. But Norm, we appreciate you sharing that. Thank you again for for being here with us. Our next inductee tonight uh, from the class of 2006 is Mimi Mahan. Mimi was a multi-sport athlete for the Big Blue, earning eight varsity letters in volleyball, basketball, and softball. Mimi led the volleyball team as the starting setter for three seasons, earning Greater Miami Conference first team recognition her senior year. On the basketball court, she started at guard for her senior year, where she was second in the conference in three-point percentage at 44.6% and fifth in three-point baskets made. Mimi saw the greatest amount of success on the softball diamond, where she was a four-year starter. She earned GMC first-team recognition three times and all Southwest Ohio honorable mention twice. Her senior season, she received recognition as a first-team member on the all Southwest Ohio team. Mimi's offensive power helped lead the Big Blue to a third-place finish in the state championships her senior year. She continued her softball career at Rio Grande, where she was named first team all conference and first team all region two times before transferring to Cleveland State, where she was named to the all newcomer team and helped the team win the Horizon League championships in 2009 and earn a spot in the NCAA regionals. Mimi received her degree in mathematics from Cleveland State University and is currently an assistant softball coach at Tufts University as well as a personal trainer at HealthWorks in Boston. Ladies and gentlemen, from the class of 2006, Mimi Mahan. I didn't like to pass the ball either, so I'm <laughs> sorry. Um, thank you so much. I want to first say congratulations to my fellow inductees. I am truly honored to be here tonight. At this time last year, my brother and now Hamilton High's football coach, Nate Mahan, stood right here um, being inducted into last year's class. He stood in this exact same spot and shared his perspective on how playing sports for Hamilton shaped him into the person he is today. I remember listening to him reflect on that time and the huge role that my family played and the success he had and really all my siblings have had at that table in the back. I won't make you stand, but you can give a little wave. I'm sure you know the Mahan clan back there. 
Um, being from a family of five, uh, Nate nailed it on the head last year when he said that he and my brothers Nick and Chris did not cut Allie and I any slack when playing sports together growing up. I actually to this day fully believe I have a chip in my tooth from Nate, Coach Mahan, giving me an elbow in the driveway playing basketball. Um, how can guarding a future Division I football player not prepare me for high school sports? It sure did. I was fortunate to spend so much time outside playing sports with my triplet siblings, Chris and Allie. I think what I am most proud of in my family is the fact that all five of us continued to play sports in college, and we really find so much value in how that has shaped us into the people we are today. While I am super proud of my siblings for all their individual accomplishments, I also realize that what we have been able to do is a direct result of my parents, Nikki and Dale Mahan. When I was in high school, I took for granted the fact that my mom and dad were always there for us at every game, at every event, supporting us in anything that we decided to do. Um, my mom is not here tonight, but I know she's watching, so thank you for the live stream. That is uh, the best thing of the night. Um, she's in the hospital with pneumonia. You may or may not know this, um, but two years ago, she needed a kidney transplant, and I actually donated my left kidney for her to receive a match for her. She's doing really well. I'm also fine, so if, you, if that ever happens to you and your family, um, please do not hesitate to reach out to me, and um, I would love to help you through that process. Um, she is doing really well. She gets sick from time to time, but she's watching tonight, um, and she's going to be fine. Mom, you have taught me what it looks like to be brave, strong, and kind. You show me how to have courage, perseverance, and faith. My dad has taught me how to set high expectations, to follow my dreams with no limits, and how to get the most out of myself and those around me. He has taught me how to be a coach and how to be a leader. My dad likes to tell me that I'm a carrot chaser, and I think Heckman and Isgro back there can agree. He says, if you dangle the carrot out in front of me, I will chase it. And somehow along the way, all those carrots led me to Boston, where I'm very fortunate to be living both of my passions, um, coaching softball at Tufts University and training. Uh, the fact of the matter is that my experiences in high school have led me to be where I am today. I was a carrot chaser back then, and I still am. If I have something in my mind that I want to accomplish, I will work tirelessly to do so. But what was really special about my time at Hamilton is that I had, a, I had teams full of carrot chasers. In volleyball, basketball, and softball, each team was full of strong-willed, determined people. And the, and the secret to the success we had as a team especially my senior season, which saw every single sport, all three sports have tremendous seasons, was that we had an unwavering confidence in ourselves and each other. I think that ultimately is, is chasing the carrot, being so focused on the process and what we wanted to accomplish. We had a naive sense of confidence in each other that we could not imagine anyone wanting anything but the best for each other. Each sport, each coach, each unique culture taught me lessons that carry with me today. There is a part of me of every single coach I've had that lives within me and has truly shaped my coaching philosophy. First, I want to talk about Coach Berkemeyer in volleyball. What was so special about my senior season of volleyball is that we wanted to succeed not only for ourselves, but for each other and for him. He believed in us in a, in a way that I had never felt before. He celebrated every success, both big and small, and we could feel his passion on the sidelines on the court. Rachel Huber. Jessica Fansler, Emily Chafin, and my sister Allie, we played selfless volleyball. We all knew our role and accepted it, and we competed with the best of the best that year. Playing basketball for Coach Jesse Weisbrod shaped me in ways that I could have never imagined. I actually had a big knee, knee injury myself my senior year of basketball. Uh, I tore my ACL, and I thought my softball season was ruined. And like it was said before, softball was my big sport but she stood by me and supported me through a very difficult time in my life. I decided to actually play my senior year softball on a torn ACL. It was completely torn, and I put the surgery off until after that season. That taught me so much about overcoming adversity, and both Nick and Nate had knee surgeries as well, tearing their ACLs at a young age. Nick and Nate, you taught me how it was done and how to come back even stronger and better. Um, you hear, like I said, you hear so many stories of that ending careers, and they taught me that that was not going to happen. Um, and I remember saying that my senior season, I couldn't sit out because we were going to go to state. Uh, Jennifer McKee and I, I like to call her uh, my co-ringleader. She was inducted into the Hall of Fame class of 2017. We had big plans for the legacy we wanted to leave, 
And we wanted to make sure that we made it to state that year, and we did. When I reached out um, to our assistant softball coach, Coach Isgro at the time, he said one of his favorite memories of me was legging out an infield single on that torn ACL. And a common theme tonight has been unconditional support and a belief in ourselves and each other. And Coach Isgro and Coach Heckman had that in us. It really made all the difference. Of course, after high school, I had to continue to chase the next opportunity and in typical fashion follow in my brother's footsteps. After playing two years at an NAIA school and having much success, I came home that summer and reached out to Coach Heckman. Again, he supported me and had confidence in me. We ended up making videos that we put on YouTube, and Coach Heckman, they are still there. It's time to bring those down. All my players like to look those up. Um, I don't know that they're that good, but they like to look at them. Uh, but making those videos actually did lead me to Cleveland State, where I was um, granted a Division I scholarship to play softball. But really, that just taught me that, it's a, that each decision that we make leads to the next opportunity. And continuing to strive for more and to be better is something that fuels my fire every single day. I remember my senior year of college standing at first base at the University of Michigan at the NCAA regional tournament. My whole family was in the bleachers and I look, just looked up and was like, I, how did I get here? I can't believe this. But I continue to feel that way in my life. Sometimes I cannot believe the places I have traveled, the opportunities that sport have given me, but it all comes back to Hamilton High. It all started right here with a family of support coaches who pushed me, and teammates who knew how to set goals and not let anything get in our way of achieving them. So tonight, as I stand here, seemingly once again following in my brother's footsteps, I have to say thank you to Nick and Nate for always guiding the way. Thank you to my coaches for always believing in me. Thank you to my parents for always loving and supporting me. And thank you to Chris and Allie for being my best friends. Thank you. Go Big Blue. Thank you, Mimi. Our next inductee from the class of 1989, Jeff Michael. <laughs> Jeff played baseball at Hamilton under fellow Hall of Fame member Coach Dan Bowling. Jeff earned recognition his senior year as a member of the Greater Miami Conference All-Conference team, was named the Hamilton High Team Most Valuable Player, and participated in the Cincinnati East-West All-Star Game. Jeff played collegiately at the University of Kentucky, go Wildcats, where he was named. I know that'll get a round of applause in Hamilton, Ohio, yes. Uh, at the University of Kentucky, where he also was named the team's most valuable player in 1993 and also named to the All-SEC Tournament team that season. Jeff was selected by the Baltimore Orioles in the 1993 Major League Baseball Draft. He played four seasons in the Orioles' farm system and three seasons in the Independent League. Jeff received his degree from the University of Kentucky in kinesiology in 1999 and has gone on to earn master's and doctoral degrees in curriculum and instruction from Tennessee Tech University. Jeff has taught students with special needs for nearly two decades and is the lead teacher at the Tennessee Rehabilitation Center helping students with special needs transitions into the workplace. Jeff resides in Estill Springs, Tennessee and has two children, Kylie Michael and Jamie Michael. Ladies and gentlemen, from the class of 1989, Dr. Jeff Michael. I'm kind of in an uh, awkward spot here. I'm not quite sure what to say, but um, I was fortunate enough to go back. I got my undergrad at UK and was able to go back a couple times to uh, further my education. Um, I'm not a doctor, but I'm real close. I have one more degree to go. And matter of fact, last night my mom and I were talking about it on the way home, and she's like, just let everybody think you're a doctor. It's no big deal. And I'm like, no, no. She said, this is not possible because you're an idiot. And that's what she said. <laughs> One of, the, uh, one of the first classes I had to take at the University of Kentucky was public speaking, so um, I got a D in that class, so <laughs> you are on for a real treat. Um, thank you so much to everyone that's uh, had a hand in this. It's, uh, I know it's a lot of hard work, a lot of stuff gets done behind the scenes that we don't probably know about, so this has been incredible. 
the last 24 to 36 hours. It's just been, it's been amazing. So thank you to everyone that's made this possible. Uh, to the selection committee, thank you. Uh, I'm incredibly honored. This is one of the greatest honors of my life. Um, I could have gone to the grave a happy man with a nomination, let alone to be inducted. So thank you. It's just, I'm overwhelmed with it. Uh, I feel very uneasy about standing here tonight, sort of a I don't belong here type of feeling. And I feel that way for a couple of reasons. Um, first off, I played a team sport, so for me to be recognized for my individual achievements seems odd. And secondly, my teammates here at Hamilton High were so talented. I was a very small cog in a large machine, but the other night, Coach Dan Bowling gave me a call and it was nice enough to congratulate, congratulate me, and he said a few things that made a lot of sense to me. Uh, first off, he said, you're right, you don't belong in the Hall of Fame. <laughs> it's a typo, but just go with it. <laughs> but seriously, the second thing he said was, yeah, you did have amazing teammates, but..." They were extremely talented, but they made you better. And I had to think about that, and he's spot on. Because I remember being a sophomore and looking up at the junior and senior classes and just, um, just realizing the amount of talent that was there before me. And I knew then and there that the game was over. I had to start working. It just, I don't want to sound like I'm bragging, but up to that point, it just kind of was just something I could do and I just kind of walked through it. But then once I saw that talent, I knew that I had to get busy. Um, so to Coach Bowling and to my teammates, thank you. Without your hard work, your dedication, and your sacrifice, none of this would have been possible for me. Uh, it goes without saying that I wouldn't be here tonight without the love and support of so many people, not just on the field, but off. So to my parents, my family, my friends, summer coaches, collegiate coaches, and teammates, thank you and I love you all. Uh, there is one person who couldn't be here tonight and I would be remiss if I didn't mention him here. So to Mr. Donald Morris, thank you and I'll see you soon, buddy. Thank you so much, I'm blessed and go Big Blue. Jeff, you're close enough. I think everybody's good if we call you doctor. Is that okay, everybody? You good with that? We just round up. It's fine. We're good. Our next inductee from the class of 1996, Perletha Butch Printup. Butch Printup led the Big Blue on the gridiron while also participating in basketball and track. Playing under fellow Hall of Fame member Coach Ed Minery, Butch earned a position on the Southwest Ohio All-District Honorable Mention Team in 1994 before being named captain for the 1995 season. During the 1995 campaign, Butch displayed a defensive prowess on the field, which garnered him the title of Southwest Ohio District Defensive Player of the Year and also earned him a spot on the All-State second team. He continued to impress as a participant in the East-West All-Star Game. A two-time recipient of the Greater Miami Conference All-Academic Award, Butch received a scholarship to Bowling Green State University before transferring to Eastern Kentucky University, where he was a three-year letterman and starter. He helped lead the Colonels to an OVC championship and a Division I AA playoff appearance. Butch resides in Hamilton with two children, Addison and Aaliyah, where he works for the United States Postal Service. Ladies and gentlemen, from the class of 1996, Perletha Butch Printup. Congratulations, sir. Congrats. Thanks. Well, thank you very much. It's a great pleasure to be here. Um, first of all, I must say I want to thank God for everything he's done for, for me. Um, in addition to that, the next greatest person I know would be my mother. I want to thank her very much. She's in the back. We won't get her to stand up. And if you look next to her, my daughters are there. Uh, one of them wants to come up here and, and say hi to everybody, but uh, we probably should leave her back there. 
Um, but also my family, many of them are here today. I have brothers that also played and, and um, were athletes in the Hamilton High uh, system, Randy and David. Um, they love our community and our schools very much so. Um, also want to say thank you to the Booster Club, um, Athletic Department, and just Hamilton City Schools in, different, uh, in general. Um, when I was told I was going to be inducted, I immediately began to think about, well, how did I really get there? How, why am I here? What led me to be able to do this? And uh, the answer I got was, um, it was all the re help I received from the community. Um, the Hamilton community is very strong. Uh, those around me are the ones who made me exactly who I am. Uh, our coaches over the time, uh, many of them are here. I didn't get to say hi to Coach Dinger, uh, Coach Minery, uh, Coach Mers. I can go on and on. Um, all of these coaches, um, they are who made me who I am. Um, their influence um, is immeasurable on how much it has done for me. Um, it wasn't just the coaches, though. It was other people, too. Um, I remember when I was around eight years old, my brother Randy, uh, he used to urge me to go out and run. Uh, at the time, I was playing for Little Blue. I had a bit of a weight problem. Um, I was a little overweight. Uh, but he'd make me go out and run. And we'd go out early in the morning. He'd wrap me up in garbage bags. Uh, <laughs> He said, well, brother, you got to sweat off some of that weight. That way you can play with the kids actually your age because you're, you're a little bit heavy. Uh, but that did teach me that uh, in order to do something such as be a good football player or whatever it may be, um, you got to make some kind of sacrifice. Um, and that's one lesson I learned from that. Um, my mother always worked a lot. Um, there was times where she'd get off of work late. Um, but when that was the case, someone else helped us out. I had a friend named Tyrone. His father would take us to football practice every day. Um, and without the help of people like him, I may not have played sports even until high school. I'm, I'm not sure. Um, and then I, to go back, there are coaches and teachers that I encountered in Hamilton City Schools. I can pretty much name every coach for every sport I ever played in the Hamilton City School District starting in seventh grade, going all the way up. Um, and that's a special impact to me because my memory is not that good. Um, um, these coaches helped me to have confidence as well as the needed knowledge to excel as a student athlete. Uh, being involved in sports at Hamilton High has helped me to forge lifelong friendships. Um, there's guys that I see till today. Um, and some of them, I just sometimes I only know their face. And then say, hey, Butch, you know, remember me? And then we start to talk, and I say, oh, now I remember you, and different things like that. Um, and then we get reacquainted. And then there's guys who, who never lost touch that I see all the time. Um, and I see them around. And when I, I've moved back home now, I see them around. Um, and there's just not really uh, much like those kinds of friendships that you find out here as you get let, go on later in life. Um, what we have in this community is special. I have seen other school districts, and the support in Hamilton is absolutely unique. Uh, when community support is high, a kid like I was can rise higher and even overachieve. I encourage everyone to continue to be a catalyst to spark growth and achievement for the young people in our community. And I also thank our, everyone in our community for all it has done for me and will continue to do for all the young people in the future. Uh, that's all I have to say for tonight, but thank you all. It's a great honor. Thank you, Butch. That was excellent. Our next inductee from the class of 1989, Damon Pugh. Damon was a defensive anchor for the Big Blue football team, coached by fellow Hall of Fame member coach Ed Minnery. Damon's tough defensive nature earned him the team MVP award three times while in high school. He was also selected as a member of the All-State team in 1988 
and 1989. Damon also played in the East-West All-Star Game and the North-South All-Star Game in which he was named the MVP. Damon continued his football career at Central State University where he was a member of the NAIA championship team in 1995. He was also named MVP of the Budweiser Gateway Classic football game and participated in the Black Classic Alabama football game as well. Upon graduating from Central State with a degree in communications, Damon played semi-professional football for the Central Ohio Lions for three seasons, winning three championships. He also played for the Butler County Broncos for one season, where he was voted the hardest hitter. Damon resides in Hamilton, where he works as a nurse's aide and has one child, Damon Jr. Ladies and gentlemen, from the class of 1989, Damon Pugh. Congratulations, sir. Well deserved. Nineteen seventy. My father did a U-turn on seventy-five. I was sick. Went to the hospital, well, children's hospital. Had a lot of tubes and stuff in my head, and I was, you know, I told my mom and all that I wasn't going to make it. But family prayed over me. And a family member, as I got older, he told me, he said, Damon, you, 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 uh, you're special. I said, what? You want them special babies. He said, do you know, you, you know, you died several times and this and that. I said, no. He said, well, well you did. So go up a little further. I remember... I didn't like football. Hated it. You know, it come on TV, I'm like, dang, man, we got to watch football. But someone who's no longer here, my older brother, who was uh, killed in 2012, um, was my biggest hero, sports hero. He told me, you're going to play. And so I started playing. I didn't get to play on a team because I was too young too small. You hear that too young, too small stuff. So uh, one day I came home from school. My best friend, Donald Ripley back there, raise your hand, Donald. I kept wondering, like, man, where y'all going, man? Where y'all going? Why y'all keep leaving? Where y'all going? I said, man, we go to football practice. I said, really? I said, Can I go? That's when I met his father. God rest his soul. He was straight to the point. He said, I'm going to take you. But the first time you act up, you'll never go again. And as they say, that's what set the tone. That's what made me who I am. I kept going. I loved it. Um, a lot of people don't know, because I never say it, and this is the first time I'm going to say this. I had a lot of hate, a lot of bitter, a lot of anger, a lot of sadness in me, because I just felt like I wasn't wanted. Like I had to be a part of something. I had to be the, you know, the, the tension. I had to get this. And so football was my outlet. Football was my best friend. In 81, my father passed, my best friend. I was torn. So there was football. So I kept playing. I had coaches like Coach Houck, Coach Rulon, uh, when I met, who schooled me along in junior high. I said, keep doing it. Keep doing it. You good. And then one day at a banquet, that's when I met Coach Pond. And I'm sitting here, I'm like, wow these people. I haven't heard nobody say Coach Pont's name. I said, man, you know, and I remember looking at him. And he said, is there a problem? I said, no, sir. He said, you must be Damone. He always said Damone. <laughs> I said, yes, sir. <laughs> and so, and he wrote my name down. And so we get over to the high school, and I met another good friend of mine that said, uh, you Damon Pugh? I said, yes, I am. I was at the community center, and he said, uh, Heard you a linebacker. I heard you want to play linebacker. I said, no, I'm going to play linebacker. He said, oh, really? I said, yes, really. I'm going to play linebacker. And I was a sophomore. And I remember after the, uh, doing a sophomore year, at the end, a lot of players got selected to the All-Star Games and all that. And I remember going up to another great coach of mine who's no longer here, Coach Muschietti. I said, Coach Muschietti, what's going on? Why am I in the All-Star Game? I got a lot of tackles. He said, Damon, you're not a senior. These are for seniors. He said, you'll get your turn. I said, I know I am. I'm going to get all of that. He said, okay, you're going to get it. So then come the junior year, I'm still feeling the same way. And so all along, I didn't know what they were telling me, these coaches. They was building my character. They were saying, hey, look, just because you don't have it now, 
and you're not doing this and that. It's going to come. Be patient. It's going to come. And it came. And one of the greatest feelings my senior year is when you recognize for what you've done. I don't really, I, I feel like when I'm on a team, everybody's a captain. I didn't consider myself just the captain. Everybody's a captain because we're all out there putting in work. And it's not easy because everybody can't play football. Everybody don't want to play football. And when I played football, I did not only just play for me. I played for those who could not play. I played for those who weren't able to play. I played for those who were sick. I played for those who were young or those who were short, tall, whatever the case may be. I played for everybody because I said, you can, if I can do it, you can do it. And playing in the games, whatever, um, it, it, it gave me this thing of like, you in control, you can do anything you want to do. And I said, okay, so I've done it. And Coach Menry said, Damon, yes, sir. Got to get you ready. I said, ready for what? You going to that all-star game. Said, what all-star game? Well, you got two of them. There's an east-west and there's a north-south. And you're going to be ready. I said, okay, I'll be ready. And... When I played that North-South All-Star game and East-West game, you got these players going to Yale, Harvard, Stanford, all this and that, they big time, you know, some of them from Forest Park and all this and that. And, and when I said, and they say Hamilton, oh, Hamilton. I said, yeah, Hamilton. So what I did was I put Hamilton on the map. When I got done playing, they knew Hamilton wasn't a joke because I wasn't there to play. I was there to seek and destroy. I was going to get mine and get everything. And when Coach Minnery would tell you, when he went to that North-South All-Star game, there has never been, and still to this day, a player who had uh, the flu and then turn around and still play in that game and get seven sacks in that one game. I remember going to the University of Akron before I transferred to Central State, and one of the players was there, and he said, I said, man, what y'all coach said when y'all went in the uh, locker room? He said he put a big number 33 on the uh, chalkboard. He said, if we don't stop 33, we might as well just leave this game. So yeah, I guess that's why y'all quit. <laughs> Didn't stop me. And I walked away from that, you know, we won. But I'm going to speed up now. So I ended up, uh, went up uh, playing at Akron. I left Akron. And then I went to the College of Mount St. Joseph where I played with Coach Pont. And then I left. And I was just, you know, going to school at Miami University. And a friend of mine, uh, I'm going to say her name, uh, Angela Frazier, a good friend of mine, um, she took me to my first professional football game. That was the Bengals, and they played the, it was Houston Royals at the time. And um, I'm sitting there, and she looked at me. She said, what's wrong with you? And I, I was crying. And uh, I said, you see that guy right there, number 57? She said, yeah, you on the Bengals. I said, well, you know the difference between him and myself? She said, no, what? He played in a North-South All-Star game just like me. And I had MVP, and he didn't. I said, but you know the biggest difference between him and me? I'm sitting here watching him play something I love. And he's playing something I love. And I told her, I said, I'm going back to school. And so that's when I decided to go to Central State. And I played. But the more the whole story is, it's character and you never give up. I had not a clue about the, you know, getting inducted into the Hall of Fame. I forgot about all that. I get a phone call. Well, get your suit and your shoes together. Who is this? This your mother. I said, well, what am I getting my shoe and, you know, shoes together for? Well, somebody been trying to get in touch with you. There's something about you inducted into some Hall of Fame thing. I don't know. You know, I, you come on, I give you the number. All right. So I get home and I call. Damon Pugh, how you doing? I've been trying to get in touch with you. I say, hey, hey, how you doing? You know, I'm like, you know, when prank calls, I'm like, okay, what is this? And so he tells me. And uh, I said, wow, you know, all that time. So it feels good to be here because, like I said, I'm representing a lot of people. I'm standing for a lot of people. And before I forget, like I said, I told him I was going to tell him, and that's Coach Murs back there. We played uh, um, Western Hills, and uh, it was a muddy game. And... Uh, we getting beat, not by much. He pulled me over to the sideline. I mean, we went way over to the side too. Come here. What's wrong with you? That's what you mean, Coach. You're not playing this and that. You ain't playing with your ability. What's wrong with you? I need you to get out there and do this and do that. I'm like, and just the way he said it, it's like I could see everybody in him. 
And that's the first coach that brought tears to my eyes. And I was so angry. I said, somebody got to pay. The next play, I went out there because he had told me, he said, visualize yourself doing something great. And I went out there. And like these two beautiful people sitting here, that gap. He always said, if you see a gap, you take it, but you better not miss. And in my mind, I'm saying, if I can get to the quarterback before he get to the running back, it's mine. And before he handed that ball off, he handed it to me, and I ran in. And everybody looking around, and only one person saw me was a referee, and I was standing in the end zone with the ball. So with that being said, I thank you all. I thank you all on behalf of everyone who supported me. Um, and before I forget, I thank God. Because if it wasn't for God, I would not be here. I had a lot of close calls. And um, thank you. Damon, thank you very much. That was excellent. Our next inductee from the class of 1976, Tom Townsend. Tom's a 1976 graduate of Garfield High School where he played basketball, baseball, and tennis for the Griffins. He was an integral part of the Garfield basketball team, helping the team receive a ranking of 11th in the state his senior season. He led the team in scoring, free throw percentage, efficiency, and was second in rebounding. Tom was named captain his senior year and was voted the team's MVP. He currently ranks 27th in points scored for Garfield basketball history. He also received honors as a member of, of the Greater Miami Conference first team, all Golden Triangle first team, all Southwest District second team, and all state honorable mention. Tom received a scholarship to Fried Harneman University to play basketball and tennis. After his playing days, he served as a high school basketball referee for 25 years. Tom resides in Hamilton with his wife, Sophia, and they have two children, Christy Snyder and Drew Townsend, and three grandchildren, Hayden, Carter, and Josie. Tom is employed by Vora Technology Park as the director of grounds maintenance. I do have to say one thing about Tom. <laughs> He's nervous. Um, I, you know, I, I announced... <laughs> Yeah, how much you want to pay, and we can change the story, right? No. Um, Tom, Tom was I, one of the things that uh, I, I gave up the, the announcing last year, and I've had a lot of people ask me, do you miss it? And there's parts of it I miss. There's a lot of, I, I don't miss having, like, Skittles for dinner every night from the concession stand. But um, one of the things I miss most is that, and I've, I've known Tom for, for quite some time in a few different capacities, but every time I walked into that gymnasium and I walked by the scores table, didn't matter what was happening that night, didn't matter what uh, he had to deal with as he helps out with the basketball game productions, there was always the biggest smile on this guy's face that you would see in that entire gymnasium. And his happiness was really one of the highlights of the time I spent announcing at Hamilton. He always gave me such encouragement, made me feel, he fed my ego that did not need to be fed. And, uh, and, and I, I really, he's just a special guy, and it's a pleasure to be able to introduce him to you all here tonight. From the class of 1976, Tom Townsend. Well, you're going to have to bear with me because I'm probably going to have to read this. I thought I would be able to memorize it, but uh, I'm sorry uh, that just isn't going to work. So I'm going to have to read this. But uh, Norm, as you was talking, I yeah, I never met an, an assist in my life, and and Coach Flag can verify that I couldn't play defense either. I mean, that just wasn't going to work with me. Well, I'm going to start off. Good evening, everyone, and thank you so much for being here. I'd like to take this opportunity to congratulate my fellow inductees and say what an honor it is to be going into the 19, or I'm sorry, the 2019 Athletic Hall of Fame. Next, I'd like to thank the Hall of Fame committee for this honor and for the amazing banquet. This event has always been first class. I have had the privilege of working with the Athletic Department of Hamilton High over the past few years, and I want to say that Todd, Tyler, Missy, and Linda, 
You're an amazing group to work with. You guys run a department that the GMC and the whole city can be proud of. I would like to start off by thanking the many coaches I had along the way. Each and every one of them helped me, helped mold me into the player and the person I am today. So it's their fault, not mine. Don't blame me. <laughs> coaches I had in baseball were Sam Patrick, Al Hilliard, Don Horn, John Crecky. Dick Justice, Fred Miller, Don Simmons, and of course my father, Bruce Paps Townsend. All good Lindenwall people, as a matter of fact. My coach for tennis was Mike Dorr. And for basketball included Sam Patrick, Bouncing Billy Bruner, Dan the Man Brandenburg, Jerry Scribner, Jumping Johnny Burns, and the man Don Gillespie. I would also like, like to thank John Ross for keeping me up and running during the time I played in referee. I would also like to thank Bill Dinger, who helped get my scholarship to Freed Hardman University. Coach Dinger, I made it a year, and that was a year longer than everybody said I would make it. <laughs> I would also like to thank Coach Don Gillespie for making not only me, but all the athletes he coached better people on and off the court. My senior year, we made it to 11th in the state. All five starters averaged double digits at different points throughout the season. I'm so lucky to have gone and played for Garfield High School. I wore the colors of gold and red proudly as it helped me grow as an individual and prepare me for the real world by going to school with such a diverse group of people. Coaches are a huge part of athletics and play a major role in lots of young kids' lives. I had such great influence in the area of coaching, it has been my pleasure to give back to youth sports. I've been fortunate enough to coach my kids and now my grandkids. I sure hope that they are fortunate to have me as their coach too. Drew, be quiet, don't say anything. <laughs> <laughs> Players need to be taught the basic fundamentals of sports at a young age because if they are not, if if not, they will be behind the next year and will begin to develop bad habits. I love to coach the younger kids because I'm building their skills and their help keeping me young. I tell the kids I coach it doesn't matter what happens in a game because the sun still comes up tomorrow and you still have to go to school on Monday, unless it snows. <laughs> during the senior year, during the summer of my senior year, I was lucky enough to play on a team called the Hamilton Pioneers which was made up of players from different teams around the Hamilton and Cincinnati area. We were led by our coaches from Garfield, Jerry Scribner and Don Gillespie. We had an opportunity to play in Poland, which, it, which was a tremendous experience to see him play in another country. I would like to thank Dr. Scott Grevy for illegally bringing peanut butter on the trip. He was just a sophomore at the time, so we had to confiscate it so he wouldn't get in trouble. My love for the game of basketball continued and I became a basketball official later in life. I enjoyed working 25 years with different referees, coaches, and players along the way. Being a basketball official made me see the game in a different light. A special thank you to all the referees that I worked with who carried me over all of those years, 25. I know your backs are killing you. Or you can, or you Mark, you can testify to that. The last thing I want to talk about, but probably should have been the first, is my family and friends. I have been, I have been blessed with friends, aunts, uncles, nieces, nephews, a special mother-in-law, brother and sister-in-laws, a favorite son-in-law, a future favorite daughter-in-law, a loving sister and brother, parents that supported and loved me unconditionally, two beautiful, intelligent kids that I'm so proud of, three smart grandkids that I love more than life itself, and a loving wife of 40 years who has not only been a rock for me, but the entire family and the person I strive to be like. All my friends and family, please stand up. So that means you guys, you can get up. <laughs> I mean, come on. And let me say thank you from the, for being here and being able to count on you in good times and bad. 
Family and friends are the most important thing in the world, and I have been blessed with all these amazing people in my life. Thank you again for this honor, and congratulations to all the other inductees. Thank you. Thank you, Tom. Now, none of you ever booed Tom when he was an official, right? I just want to check on that first. Uh, okay. Yeah, people are actually raising their hands. They want to admit it. <laughs> tonight is your chance to apologize. So if you ever booed Tom, before you leave tonight, go apologize for that. These officials have a tough job. Uh, next, our final inductee from the class of 1949 is Jim Truitt. Jim Truitt attended Roosevelt Junior High and Hamilton High School where he was a wrestler and a member of the football team. Jim recorded three years of winning records on the wrestling mat, including a Greater Ohio League Conference Championship on his way to being ranked second in the entire state of Ohio. He then joined the United States Air Force, and Jim, we thank you for your service where he played football for the Randolph Field Air Force Base, playing in Africa and London, as well as in the USAFE tournament. After serving, Jim attended Texas Lutheran College where he played football and earned a degree in physical education. He went on to teach and coach in the Hamilton City School District for 33 and a half years. Jim spent time as the offensive line coach at Garfield, helping the team to an undefeated season in 1966, which earned them a Greater Ohio League title, as well as a fifth place ranking in the state. He also coached baseball at Garfield and was the offensive coordinator for the Taft Tigers in the late 1970s. He lives in Hamilton with his wife, Mary, and together they have four children, Deb Hansel, Bill Truitt, Patty Humphrey, and Jimmy Truitt. Ladies and gentlemen, from the class of 1949, Jim Truitt. Mo, my, my speech is not going to last near as long as yours is. <laughs> I'd like to just say thanks to everybody for being here tonight. It, it's a great honor for me. And um, the nominating committee deserves a great deal of thanks for putting all these on, especially Jack Young for helping uh, his part in my being here. I'd like to introduce my family at this time, uh, my wife, of uh, going on 63 years. Mary. I had to go all the way to Texas to find her. <laughs> my oldest daughter, Debbie Hansel, and her, her son, my grandson, David. <clears throat> Bill Truitt and his wife, Cindy. Patty Humphreys from Wisconsin. Thank you all for coming down. Jimmy, Jimmy Truitt is uh, from uh, Atlanta, been down there for a long time, and he came up um, for this special occasion. Also, the surprise of the evening yesterday, uh, my own youngest son kind of fibbed to me and told me that his uh, girls couldn't come up. And uh, I was talking to somebody last night at the, the other meeting, and all of a sudden I looked up and here those three gals came. Megan, stand up please. Nicole, and Ellie. Megan, by the way, is a lawyer she can take care of my legal. Uh, Nicole is an accountant. She can take care of what little money I got. And Ellie's going to be an advertiser. 
Now, I don't know how she can help me, but uh, they've all, uh, uh, this is Ellie's uh, last year in school, and it was all of them from down in Georgia, and, uh, and I'm real proud of them. Uh, the rest of my family, Steve and Brenda, Truett, my nephew and his wife, Paula, my niece, and Evan and Julie. Stand up, Evan. I want them to see how big you are. <laughs> he could have played football in high school, but he didn't like the work. All of the kids uh, went to Talawanda school, and uh, and all of them, all four of them, were involved in in athletics uh, throughout their school uh, days. And I swear, I don't see how Mary was able to keep them at their practices and at their games and on time. And she did a good job of it. Appreciate that, Mary. I remember when I first decided that I wanted to maybe try to play football. I went to Roosevelt Junior High School, and uh, you all may remember Bill Sharp, who is probably the finest guy you'll ever meet. Um, coached baseball and football and about everything at, at Roosevelt. Well, when basketball season came along, I figured, you know, I might as well go out and try baseball, basketball. I can play basketball. And uh, Bill had the ability of anybody I've ever seen to pick out the potential of a of young athlete. And after the first practice, we were walking off the court, and Bill come up and put his arm around me, and, and he didn't want to tell me that he was going to cut me. But he did say, Jim, maybe you ought to stick to football. <laughs> and so I played, I played football after I got out of high school in, at um, the Hamilton, the Blue Devils, I think. Maybe some of you people can remember the professional, semi-professional team that um, they started here in Hamilton. And we had a pretty good team. Um, some of you may have been on that team. Uh, anyway, I went from there into the service and uh, was stationed at Randolph Field and uh, down in San Antonio. And they had a baseball or a football team, and I made the team, and we flew everywhere and played. Gosh, we played teams that we shouldn't have been playing because they beat the hell out of us. San Diego Naval Training Center. I played against five white jerseys that night. I didn't know whether I was going to make it or not. <laughs> but when I started, uh, got into high school, I decided that maybe I could try a little football. And so I went out and we were, you know, practicing and, and I made the team. Well, they maybe they still do, but in order to play, uh, in athletics, athletics, this you have to have a um, have to pass physical, and so I, Doc Moon at that time was our team physician, and and he would fill out the form for you and sign it. Well, you're supposed to take it home and get your mom or dad to sign it. Well, I took it home and gave it to Dad and told him I wanted to try out for football, and he said, "No, I'm not going to sign it." He said, "You get out there and get hurt." I, don't, I won't sign it. Well, I, I wanted to play so bad that I, I thought, well, and he was left-handed. So maybe I can write, uh, sign his name. <laughs> well, it, it passed. <laughs> and as luck would have it, in one of the games, I recovered a fumble in, in the end zone. And, of course, they put it in the journal news. One evening after practice, I come walking home, and, and in the living room, Jim's, he, uh, Dad says, 
Jim, I need to talk to you. And I said, uh-oh, here it comes. So he said, are you playing football? And I said, Dad, I really wanted to play football. And he said, I just went ahead and signed your name. And he said, well, if you get hurt, don't you come crying to me. And you know what? They never missed another game as long as I was in high school. Went to every game they could. And uh, I guess they were kind of tickled. I don't know. <laughs> but I, I went from there and, and uh, played, uh, well, as I told you, I played probably for 10 years on a regular organized football team in uh, Randolph Field. Um, in, um, well, it's in, I went over to Saudi Arabia for a year, and they had a baseball team or a football team over there. Well, I don't know why I keep saying baseball, but um, at least uh, we won the division, and they sent us to North Africa. They had a tournament going over there, and we uh, it was two and out. You you could lose two before you were out. Well, we won the first game and lost the second one, and they sent two teams to England for that. You, 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 the Air Force um, tournament in uh, Europe, they called it, USAFI, I think. And, well, long, ter long story short, we um, lost both games. But then the good part about it, we were fogged in for two weeks. <laughs> no planes were flying. Our, base commander in Saudi Arabia sent us a telegram and said, you better get your butts back here. I'm going to court-martial every one of you. Well, we finally got back to our base, and he didn't. He was glad that we got back. But I, uh, from there, I, I did play in uh, uh, three years in college after I got out of service. and. Uh, my senior year, I decided I'd probably better not play anymore. They hired a, a head coach that was 26 years old, and I was 28 at the time. And so my time was up. After I got out of service, I was able to uh, get a job out in the county in the Lakota School District. In my second year out there, Jim Hartman, who was the athletic director at the time, told me that they wanted to start a freshman team and wanted to know if I'd, I'd help coach the team. And of course, that was right down my alley. And we played six games that year and won four of them. After the first game that we had won, I was so built up, so high, so so tickled that we had won the game like you know you're going to do i walked off oh excuse me i walked off to the field with my with my team and um we talked in the in the in the shower room and everything like you like you always do when i came out my wife was standing there and i could tell she was dead. <laughs> that may have been her And I said, Mary, what's the matter? Well, after the game, you walked right off and left me standing right there on the field. I said, Mary, that was my first win. You know, I, you know, I apologized to her, but she understood finally. And and um, then I got a, I got a job at uh, at Garfield as as line coach. And uh, we, I coached there for five years. In 1966, we uh, won nine and lost none. We had an unde undefeated team, and, and we were fifth in the state. Of course, the, at that time, the GOL, the Greater Ohio League, uh, was running. And, and uh, at the end of the season, most of the, the sports writers that had a vote lived up north and northeast and so we were voted 
uh, number five behind Maslin and a few of the other teams that they were always up in the top uh, as football players were there. Anyway, I'm going to close now, but I, I really would thank everybody for coming. It's such a nice crowd and a good, good meal, and, and you guys have done a super job. I appreciate that. So good evening, and, and have a safe trip home. Thanks. Thank you, Jim. And let's have a big round of applause for the 2019 class of the Hamilton Athletic Hall of Fame. <laughs> Job well done to everybody. Folks, before we go, um, just a, a few words. This evening, you have received a wonderful honor, a recognition of your contributions to this district and our city, which is important in and of itself. But as we leave this place, I encourage you to think less about the awards you've received in your past accomplishments and instead think more about what you will do with your recognition to change the future, the future of your families, your neighborhoods, and the people you love. What will you do as a Hall of Fame inductee? What will you do with your award? Polish discus thrower, Pedor Malakowski, knew exactly what he would how he would answer that question. And I'll be honest with you, I don't know a thing about discus throwing, but I do know that Malakowski is one of the world's best. Uh, that isn't just my opinion. That's a reflection of his medal cabinet. Malakowski has won the European Team Championship, the European Championship twice, I might add, and the World Championships. But the pinnacle award of Malakowski's career two Olympic medals, a silver from the 2008 Beijing Games and another silver from the 2018 Olympics in Rio de Janeiro. Now, as nice as your award may be, from what I understand, those watches that were donated by Jostens are just a tad bit, tad bit less expensive than an Olympic silver medal. But I, I, wanna, I want you to imagine, had you won an Olympic medal, what would you do with it? Where would you display it? How hard would you punch somebody square in the throat if they tried to touch it, right? Uh, what would you do with that award? Malakowski knew exactly what to do with his. In 2016, the athlete heard the story of Oleg Szymanski, a three-year-old boy with retinoblastoma, a severe and aggressive form of eye cancer. Young Oleg needed an eye surgery in New York to save his vision and his life at the tune of more than $120,000 for that one surgery. The family had raised only about $40,000 to help pay for the boy's surgery, but $80,000 is a long, long way to go when cancer knocks on your doorstep. Enter Peter Malakowski, a man who never met young Oleg, a man who didn't know his family, a man who had no connection to young Oleg other than national origin and simple humanity. Malakowski did something with his silver medal that revealed a golden heart underneath. The Polish Olympian put his medal up for sale with all proceeds set to pay for the young boy's surgery. Within only three days, a Polish couple bought that medal for $84,000, even though the previous bid was for only 19000 The medal was sold, young Oleg had his surgery, and Malakowski taught us what it means to be a champion. Malakowski said it best, for an athlete, winning an Olympic medal is a lifetime dream coming true. The most precious is the gold one, and I did everything in my power to get it, but unfortunately I didn't succeed. However, I was given a chance to increase the value of my silver. We were able to show that together we can work wonders. My silver medal today is worth a lot more than it was just a week ago. It's worth the life and health of a small Oleg. It's our great shared success. Tonight, I ask you that question again, the same exact question I posed when I began this story. What will you do with your award? Will you use it to build your own ego, to show off your own pride, or will you use it as a platform and as an opportunity to help others achieve the same successes that you've had in your life. If life has taught us anything this year, I think it's reminded us that time is of the essence. 
We only have so much time to give to others and improve the quality of their journey. I say this nearly every single year, but I am reminded of it again tonight. Use this award not as a bookend to a great athletic career, but instead use it as the starting point of a brand new beautiful chapter of your life and the lives of those you love. Spend each and every precious moment you're given thinking how you might increase the value of your award to enhance the lives of those who need it most. We thank you for sharing this night with us. We thank you for giving your talents to this school and this city, and we are grateful, very grateful, that you will always continue to achieve, to encourage, and to show the world what makes Hamilton, Ohio, a city where heart matters most. Folks, thank you for being here with us tonight. Please drive home safely.